Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Florocraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Florocraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com Travel around the world on this season of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. We're visiting a different country each episode and learning about their culture and traditions through crafts. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors and markers and toothpicks and even a ruler on hand. Remember, be creative. It's fine to change colors or patterns to make your project your own. So let's learn about different countries with fun craft ideas. India is located in Southeast Asia. It has a wide range of climates. There are over one billion people. Our crafts today concentrate on some of the Indian national symbols. Our first craft is a new batik method using glue to create a peacock feather. Then it's another look at a batik look project, but this time we use paper and our design is an elephant. Then it's time for a beaded pendant or ornament featuring bright colors and metal beads. Finally, create the look of mirrors and pressed metal using foil to make a frame. So let's get started. The peacock is the national bird of India. They symbolize grace, pride, and beauty. Today we're making a batik shirt. Here's what you'll need. You're going to get a white t-shirt, make sure it's washed and dried before you use it to get the sizing out. We're using three colors of fabric dye. You need a washable glue and a spray bottle. So let's get started. Now the first thing you want to do is to cover your work surface. We are working with dye and there are plastic gloves that will come in the dye bottles. Then we're going to lay out our t-shirt and we want to get our design. Now the design will be found on the website or you can draw it yourself. If you're using a longer t-shirt, you're going to draw your design on white paper or a colored paper and then cover it with saran wrap and then pin it in the corners. For me, because I'm using it on a small shirt, I'm going to tuck my pattern, which I've just drawn with a black magic marker, and tuck it inside a plastic bag. Then I'm going to slide that plastic bag inside my shirt. And you'll be able to see the feather exactly right through the plastic or through the, your fabric. So let's make sure it's centered. Now I'm going to take my glue and you, it, as I said, it's important that you use a washable glue and it's going to have to have a, a glue tip applicator. And I'm going to go around my design. I'm going to trace every part of the design in glue. Make sure you use washable glue, but it can be a clear glue or it can be the white glue. I'll go down, form the ribbing, curl these. Sometimes you get a dab of glue at the end, so I'm going to start from the bottom and go up. Now, any place that you put glue is going to act as a resist, and then there won't be any dye in that spot. So let's continue here. Feathers are all different shapes. And once you have your design that you like, make sure you can go back, smooth out any thick areas. 
just make sure you have a nice strong line. Now you want to set this aside and let it dry overnight. You want this to be totally and completely dry before you do anything else. Then you're going to remove your pattern. I'll push this one to the side and I have a shirt here where I've put my peacock feather down the side. Now as you can see as the glue dries it dries clear so you really won't see the design too much. Now before we went on camera I've sprayed this all down with water but I'm going to spray it again just to make sure that it's nice and wet. Especially on my feather design because we want our dyes to really spray. Okay, now I've got three colors of dye made. I'm going to start with my green dye. I'm following the manufacturer's instructions and I filled it to the line here. I'm going to drop my green in the center of my feather. Then I'm going to do blue down the, down the center all the way down and you're starting to see, do you see how you can see where it's resisting? Any place that there's glue the paint is not going in. Then I'm going to take my turquoise and continue painting the rest of the shirt. Now it's important to get a lot of dye on and I'm going to have to add more water here as well. And you can see there's a little bit more of the design. I think I'm going to add a little bit more green down that center. Now we would continue and saturate the entire shirt. You don't want any white areas. And if you need to, you can also go back with your spray bottle and keep spraying on top because you want all that paint to, sp to spread. And in fact, I'm going to just open this so I get just a little bit of extra water so you can see as it spreads. And that the paint will continue spreading all through the shirt. Then you're going to keep adding it. Once you get to the point where you have the front the way you like it, then you're going to go to the back and make sure and catch all those other areas to make sure that there's enough dye. Let's get a little bit more teal here. Then you're going to let this dry completely. Once it's dry completely, you're going to throw this in the washing machine, following the instructions that are on the dye. And when you wash it after it's been heat set, this will disappear and there will be an exact peacock feather on your shirt. So, and if you look at the finished shirt, do you see how the peacock feather is in white? And the color will spread all the way around the shirt. Our next project is a batik card. According to legends in Hindu mythology, demons churned the ocean, but an elephant called Aravada reached his trunk down into the underworld, sucked up the water, and then sprayed it into the clouds. Then it rained cool water. Each year in March or April, an elephant festival is held. Elephants with painted and decorated shields made from gems and velvets are judged. Here's what you'll need for your card. I'm gonna start out with watercolor paper, I have embroidery floss in four colors, rubber cement, don't forget your needle, some little seed beads, maybe some sequins or gemstones, your watercolors and a brush, and a pencil and ruler. So let's get started. Now the first thing we want to do is to make the base of our card. So I've taken my watercolor sheet, I'm going to fold it in half, then take my ruler and measure about 5 eighths inch just at the bottom and the side. And I've made a little mark there. And I'll just make a pencil line. Then next we want to transfer our pattern. You'll find the pattern for the elephant on the website or if you're really a good artist you can draw your own. This is the pattern and I'm going to transfer that right onto my card. Now I've already done that. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can cut this out and trace around it. You could draw this darker and lay it underneath your paper or you could put a piece of transfer or carbon paper in between and trace around it, whichever is easier for you. Don't forget also to trace and cut out an ear and a tusk out of some extra cardstock. 
So now we're going to do our resist. Batik is another form of resist. And so what we're going to do now is use our rubber cement to cover the areas we don't want to get dark paint. So I'm going to go on the inside. I'm going to cover my entire elephant. Now unlike a, a full resist, this is going to, a little bit of the color is still going to seep through, which is what we want. So I'm going to brush the entire inside of the elephant. Then also, if you can see on the pattern, let me bring this back so you can see it, there's these squiggly lines. So I'm going to brush on the outside of those squiggly lines. So let me draw those in so you can see them. And Now, the brush on, it comes with a brush, and if you need to, you can lay it on its side to get some of these smaller areas. But you want to put a nice thick coat. Don't worry if you go off the edge a little bit, because we can always cut the, we're going to trim that edge off. So we'd go all the way around, all of this area, and all in the elephant. Like I said, watch when I go on the side. And if you need to, you can use a smaller brush, too. So let's set that aside and you're going to wait for that to dry and don't forget to do his ear too. Now I've got one here that's all done. As you can see, now it's on the card. Now I'm going to take my watercolor and I want to use a really lot of water. I'm going to dip it in my green and I'm going to brush along the card. And what you're going to see is as I brush, the area that's under the rubber cement is not going to pick up the color as heavy. So what you're going to do is get a nice green background. Let's do one whole section here so you can see. Around the elephant and you're going to get this kind of speckled effect over the elephant. So let's set that aside. You're going to let that dry and I've got one here that's all done. Now there's still rubber cement on here. So what we're going to do is just take it and rub it with our fingers and all of that rubber cement is going to come off of where the elephant was. So now you have a really neat design and you kind of have like almost a, a variegated effect, almost like the height of an elephant. And we'll go all the way around the picture and just rub off all of that excess glue. We'll set that one aside. Okay, so now we've got our elephant. He's all smooth and cleaned off. You can see I did this one a little bit uh, lighter and a little bit lighter yellow green. And now we're ready to start stitching. So I've got my black thread and what I've done is taken my embroidery floss, which comes in six strands, separated it into two strands and threaded my needle. I'm gonna come up, let's start at his tusk here. I'm gonna pull my thread through hold it with my finger behind, and I'm going to just take really simple little stitches. Now don't worry if your stitches are even or as small or as large as mine are. But I'm going to go up and down, coming up on the line, and take a stitch. And I'm going to go all the way around the elephant in black. I'm going to add some accents in red and orange. And if you take a look here, I've got all my designs done. I'm going to also do around his ear, and don't forget that tusk. Now my last step is, is I want to add some beads and sequins. Now I'm going to just glue my beads and sequins down, or you could choose to sew them if you're an expert sewer. So I'm going to lay them here, put a bead on top, and then just add dots of glue. You can decorate these any way you'd like. And your last step is to cut out your ear, fold this, and attach the ear onto the elephant, just like that. Then if we look to the finish card, you can see I've trimmed off all that extra area and trimmed it down to card size so it'll fit in an envelope. Our next project is a beaded ornament. Threads, beads, and calories are twisted together to form beautiful jewelry and adornments. 
jewelry is an art form in India, and today we're going to learn how to make our own beaded ornament. Let's see what we need. We need some glitter glue, some plastic lacing, thick tacky glue, a glue pen, a plastic drinking straw, some flat back crystals, beads, papers made in India, some clothespins, a pencil, and some scissors. So the first thing you want to do is get on the website and find the patterns for our ornament. This is a lotus flower and what you do is just print them out and then cut them out. And you can see I've already got mine here. You'll need two of the base flower, two small petals, two medium petals, and one center petal. And I've written them all on here so I make sure I cut out all my pieces. So go ahead and trace around your shapes and you can see I've already started here. And you want to be sure to use uh, the same paper, and I'm using a thicker paper for the base, and then different papers for each petal. So this I'm going to use for my center petal. I'm just going to use a pencil to trace it around it. And then just cut it out. I love these Indian papers with all their texture and patterns. Reminds me of Indian cottons and fabric. Okay, so I've already got some petals cut out here and you can see I've got all different colors or shades of pink. Next we're going to glue them to one of the base flowers and you're going to start at the bottom with the smallest petal. And lotus uh, flowers are kind of open so try to kind of keep them really open looking. And I'm using this side of the glue so it makes a nice thick coating. I want those really open and flat. And you're going to just start on the outside and work your way inward. So we'll do the next here with the large petals. And then the medium. And the one center. Okay, and I've got a nice coating. Everything's flat and open. And now I'm going to glue it to the center flower. Now we want to string it, so we need a little tunnel for the cord to go through. So the next thing you do is use the thick tacky glue and paint a line down the middle and glue your straw in. And then you're going to switch back to your glue pen and coat around the edges. And then just put your flower on top. Now, that might want to slide around. So what I do is position some clothespins around the side while it dries. And you can kind of rearrange that before you leave it to dry. OK, I've got one ready to go. Now we're going to add a little bit of sparkle with some glitter pins. And you can do whatever you want. You can make some lines or you can use a different color to make some dots. I love this texture that it adds and I think it's good when you're making dots to pull away quickly and that leaves a nice little lump of glitter right where you want it. Okay, now leave, set that aside and leave it to dry. I've got one that I've done here and we're going to add some more sparkle with our flat back crystals. And these are really nice because they have some sticky on them and they're just like stickers. You can put them wherever you want. I think that looks good. And now we're going to make a knot at the top of the lacing. String some beads. And then follow the tube down your drinking straw, string some more beads at the, on the other side, and make a knot. And you can take a look at our finished example. And this would look great hanging on a tree or on a door. Got some more beads and some sparkle. Our next project is a metal frame. Metal work is an important part of the crafting in rural and small towns in India. The metal is etched into intricate designs with different cities known for various design styles. Here's what you'll need. 
I have a poster board. We have a styrofoam square, some very heavy duty aluminum foil, three colors of blue paint, glue, and then our tools. We have a magazine, just any old magazine, plastic knife, a ruler, pencils, and scissors. And don't forget to have some paper towels on hand. Okay, the first thing we want to do is to cut out our frame. We are going to make an eight inch square on our styrofoam and then cut out two inches in and make a center. So we're going to just lay our ruler here, mark off eight inches, eight inches, and I've got that all done. Remember when you're cutting styrofoam, you just use a sawing motion going down and just work your way through the styrofoam. Now I've got one that's all cut out here. If you have any rough edges, you can sand it with your uh, plastic knife or you can rub another piece of styrofoam on it to get it nice and smooth. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is to cover our styrofoam. So I've laid out a large piece of the heavy duty foil and I'm going to work it around, kind of like wrapping a package. I'm going to draw an X in that center and you can see how easily that'll tear. Then I'm going to go back with my scissors and complete that X. And then these sections will fold up. And then I'll work this all the way around, folding in the corners until it's nice and smooth all the way around. Remember that shiny side should be down. You can see there. Now I've got one all done. The other thing though is remember when you're folding in only some of that would have been covered. So what I've done is I've cut some extra pieces of foil that I'm going to glue inside. Then I'm going to show you a real tip for making these nice and even. I cut a one inch piece of poster board, whatever length your poster board is. Then I'm going to take off off of my aluminum foil about a three inch strip and we're going to use this through the whole project. I'm going to lay my foil down, put my strip in the middle, fold to one side and fold from the other side. Make that crease that really nice and flat, then just pull your strip out and then your strips will always be even. So I'm going to glue strips on each side. I won't take the time to do that, you can understand that. And we'll put those in so that it's all covered nice and neat. While you've got your poster board out too, cut, trace around your frame and cut another little piece so that we have something to put on the bottom. Now we're ready to start making our designs. Again, I've prepared a whole lot of different strips. Let me move this out of the way so you can see. Using that same method of folding it around using a three inch strip. Then I'm gonna take a pencil and I want to draw designs about every one inch. I'm going to take my ruler, mark it off approximately an inch, and let's just draw those lines across. And I want to get a nice deep etch, so I'm going to lay my magazine down, and that will help it go in. Now right to the front here, if you can see, I've got some designs which will also be on the website, and these are traditional Indian designs. and patterns and lines. And I'm going to etch these into each section. Once I've got those all completed, I'm gonna make a whole lot of those. Then it's time to start pouncing my paint. So let me grab one here that I've got all etched. Move my magazine out of the way. You can see they're all here. You can see the suns and things. And I'm gonna pick my colors of paint. So let's do the blue. As you can see, I've protected my work surface with some um, wax paper, and I'm going to just rub in, getting it all into those crevices. I can dip in a different color. Let's get some blue, teal, and you can go back in and add as much as you want. But remember, because that was on that magazine, you get those really pretty etched designs. Now this end is already dry, so I'm going to cut these off. And I have one inch squares. And now you want to start building your pattern. I'm going to take my frame back, grab my glue, and one by one I'm going to draw my design. One at a time. Let's put one here. And cover my entire frame. 
Now if you take a look at my finished frame, I've also taken that piece of cardboard and glued that on the back so you can slip a picture inside. You can use blues and greens and purples like I did or choose any color that you like. And that's today's show on India. Next up, we head to Central America and the bright colors of Mexico. Hope you can join us. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects, are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is Program 1309. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Hands-On Crafts for Kids, Crafts Around the World, Series 1300, is available for $49.99, plus $6 shipping and handling. Visit craftsforkids.com to order. Travel to distant lands with Hands-On. Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Floracraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Floracraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com